Welcome inside the Buck Dome from Charleston, South Carolina, as the Furman Paladins are in town to take on the Charleston Southern Buccaneers. Welcome in, everybody. My name is Killian McClatchy. The man sitting to my left is Evan West. And Evan, we've got a pretty good matchup between two pretty solid teams, one of which Furman coming in here still unbeaten. Exactly right, Killian. This is the highlight of Charleston Southern's non-conference home schedule. Furman, of course, at one point last year, actually ranked in the top 25, and they returned some of the key players from last year. Yeah, and we'll get into those key players for you right now. Over on the Furman side, they'll be donning their all purple tonight. It's Jordan Lyons, and he had a big game last time out. Yeah, he is one of the best guards in the Southern Conference. One of the top 25 seniors in the country by several, several watch lists. So CSU going to have to stick to this guy tonight. Well, over on the other side for CSU without Dontrell, without Dontrell sure for this evening's game, uh, but this man, Flandris Fleming Jr., he had a double-double last time out. Flan Fleming, he can do it all. He can score from outside, he can drive in, he can post up six foot four, about 200 pounds. We still haven't seen the offensive performance from him this year like we have expected, though. Perhaps tonight could be his. We're certainly going to need him to step up with Schuler being out as the intro video being played inside the Buck Dome right now. We'll take a look at some of the keys. We'll start with Furman. Well, of course, for Furman, they are the taller team. They've got a lot of length. They've got to use that in the post. They've got to attack underneath the basket. They also want to use that length to cause some turnovers. They want to win the turnover battle. And of course, you got to get hot from three to beat CSU. Yeah, they had 12 steals last time out against Loyola Chicago. Over on the other side for CSU, a team coming off of a really tough loss against North Carolina a and where they only shot 30% from the floor. Yeah, they've got to make their three-pointers plain and simple. Here in the home opener, they started slow against Columbia International, an NAIA school. And uh, in the last game, only 15.43% uh, from behind the arc. They also cannot foul. They gotta keep the Paladins off the foul line. It's really big as Furman, one of the better teams at getting to the free throw line as they're announcing the starting lineups. And here's a look at the series history. The 17th meeting all time between these two teams, Furman leads. Last year, Furman took it. They were actually ranked in that matchup. And something that's a little surprising, the home team in this matchup has won seven straight. Furman has never won inside the Buck Dome. Yeah, and even looking past this series history, there's a lot of history between these coaches. Barclay Radebaugh coached as an assistant at Furman. Head Furman basketball coach Bob Ritchie coached as an assistant under Parkley Radeball right here at Charleston Southern. So these are two coaches who know each other really well personally, not only off the court, but also on the court as well. Charleston Southern played a very good basketball game against Furman last year. Yeah, well, they're gonna have to get another big one as there's Flan Fleming Jr. We'll talk just a moment before they come out on the floor. Dontrell Schuler not playing tonight. He's been the leading scorer, averaging 18 points through these first two games. What are they going to be missing tonight without him in the lineup? They are missing a lot of toughness. Schuler loves to drive the ball. He attacks the other team's best guard. He's also Charleston Southern's best on-ball defender. So they're missing a key player on both ends. Uh, not a necessarily a healthy scratch. He had surgery on his hip in the off season, and that's why he's out tonight. Well, we'll give you the starting lineups now as they come out onto the floor. You see at the bottom four, Furman, Noah Gurley, Alex Hunter, Jalen Slauson, Jordan Lyons, the player to watch, and Clay Mounts. And over for CSU, a little bit of a different look than we've seen the first two games. Travis Anderson gets his first start of the season, as well as Terrence Porter Jr. with Didi Buskey, Duncan Lazander, and Flan Fleming. So These guards are going to have to step up in Schuler's absence. They have a lot riding on their shoulders, especially going up against Jordan Lyons. Jordan Lyons, 24 points, five assists, and three steals. Last time out against Loyola Chicago. 
The assists and steal numbers, both career highs for him. As the crowd's starting to fill in nicely, it's a rainy one here today in Charleston. It's a little cold, but the temperature's nice inside the Buck Dome as we get ready as it'll be T.J. Porter going up against Noah Gurley. Another key player to watch tonight for Furman, the guy who looks like Christian Leitner out there. Clay Mounts, 6'7", junior out of Mount Airy. This guy can score in bunches, especially from behind the arc. Only well, scored 22 last time out, and Furman ends up coming away with a basketball nearly Taken away by CSU off the tip, so Furman will get things started out. Dish it down low. Top cycle it around, there's Mounts. Mounts holding it on the wing. Dish to Lyons. Good defense by Lysander on him. Dishes that one down low, Mounts goes up and there is going to be a foul. And they're going to issue that one to CSU and Flan Fleming, and he's in a bit of shock in that one. With one second left on the shot clock as well. That's the worst part. You play fantastic defense for 29 seconds, and then you commit the foul. Last time we were here inside this building, Flan Fleming got two quick fouls, had to sit a majority of the first half. Luckily for this team, it was against Columbia International and NAIA as... Nice hook shot there from Noah Gurley. First points on the board for the Paladins as quickly pushing the tempo is CSU. And they're going to slow things down. Anderson running the one tonight. Fleming is going to have to be very careful guarding Noah Gurley in the post. This is a six foot eight, six foot nine sophomore who can score in a variety of ways. So Flan has to be careful. Plan with three seconds on the shot clock. Rings around the rim, and that is going to be touched off of Furman. So you don't get the bucket, but you get a fresh 20 seconds and the ball back for CSU. That is an added plus right there, Charleston Southern. Look at the last-ditch effort to knock the ball out. Looking inbound is Anderson, and he finds D.D. Buskey. He tiptoes the sideline. Handoff, Anderson's going to look the drive, go up with the right hand. Not strong enough, but he steals it right out of the hands of Gurley to reset things. Yes. Dish it off to Buskey for three. Off the back iron. Going up strong for that rebound and coming down with it is Mounts. Hunter hands off to Mounts, spin move, gets into the paint. Has to pick up his dribble, though. Mounts gets it back for three, and he hits the triple. All day, every day, Mounts will let it fly. They got to get closer on him. Mentioned 22 points, five is six from beyond the arc against Loyola Chicago, Mounts was. And CSU looking to try and answer back and get their first bucket. P.J. Porter, holding the ball, hands it off to Flan Fleming. Fleming working on Mounts one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to drive and it's stripped away. Fleming with a tough start to this game already. Charleston Southern needs more from him if they're going to win this game. What an offensive rebound and one. Noah Gurley doing it all himself on that play. Both teams making the most out of their second chance opportunities. Of course, on the other end, Charleston Southern not able to convert. But Noah Gurley with already quite a start to this game with an opportunity to earn his fifth point in just two and a half minutes. Ty Jones checks in for T.J. Porter. Uh, they could definitely use Ty Jones' size out there against this big Furman lineup. Really completes the end one, and it's 8-0. Anderson dribbles it up the floor. He's got Hunter working on him. Fleming one on one on Mounts again. This is out to Lysander. Jones looking to back down his man. Anderson looking to try to go anywhere. This Furman defense has been locked down. And there's going to be a foul on the floor. They're going to give that one to Slauson. 
Charleston Southern bailed out by the officials. They've only had one open look in this game. This Furman defense has been absolutely suffocating. There's a look, hands getting in there. Trey Clark, Jr. checks in for the Paladins. He stands right in front of Flan Fleming. CSU offense needs to get something going, trying to get a little bit of open space. There's Fleming. It's a screen from Jones, dishes it down low to him. Out to the corner, Anderson for three. Off the front iron. That one bounces away, here comes Furman. Ion slows things down, and Buskey strips it away from him. Buskey to Fleming, back to Buskey, and he slams it home. First bucket for Deontay Buskey. What a play, started on the defensive end with Porter taking away the ball and D.D. Buskey finishing it off with a break with Flan. I'm sorry, Travis Anderson stealing the ball. Buskey working on Lyons, and Lyons smooth on that jumper. Drops it in, Furman's the first to 10. Unselfish play from Flan Fleming as well. Being able to hand that ball off, looking to drive, dishes down low to Jones. He pumps once and he goes up, no whistle. Here comes Clark. Clark backs down his defender to the corner to Mounts. Pull up three. Back iron no good. That one is going to bounce off of CSU. And that will take us to the under 16 time out. 10 to 2 Furman. Here's another look. DD Buskey and Flan Fleming connecting for the first points for the Bucks. Geico makes it easy to get help when I need it. With licensed agents available 24-7, it's not just easy. It's having Jerome Bettis on your flag football team easy. Go get him, bus! <laughs> oh. Come on, bus. Come on. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I man, I got the flag. I got your flag, man. I got the flag. It's Geico easy. Yeah. With licensed agents available 24-7. 49 nothing! Oh. Yeah. One point. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bonvoy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences. Rewards, reimagine. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Perez open three, yes! Excellence, the will to compete. Persist down here. For the win. This is the Big South, where winners are made. Back in, there is Bob Ritchie's team coming out of the huddle, and Evan, you mentioned it. It's kind of crazy how things work out. Bob Ritchie, an assistant under Barclay Radabaugh, who was an assistant at Furman. Everything seems to cycle itself back around. There's Coach Barclay Radabaugh. As his team looking to try and get themselves back into this as the Paladins jumped out to an early lead and turning, missing that look is Gurley and here come the Bucks. Yeah, Bob Ritchie, only the best start in Furman history. A school record in wins two years ago, following it up with a school record in wins last year. They made it to the NIT, ended up losing in the first round to Wichita State. As the Paladins trying to cycle things around as the shot clock hits 10. Clark back to Gurley. Gurley tries to turn baseline, spins back, left hand. That was smooth. Great defense, but a better shot right there. What a start for Gurley. Well, Gurley having himself a good ball game. Five points, make it seven. As that goes up and one, count the bucket. And the free throw line is going to be Travis Anderson. He's made a big impression on this game already. First with the steal, now with the bucket. A couple changes. Duncan Lazander's going to check out 
as well as Didi Buskey, Nate Lewis, and TJ Porter will come back in. As Anderson will head to the line. This is a guy, there was a, a fan fest scrimmage. He got dinged up a little bit in that game. And Coach Radebaugh said trying to work him back into things. And good to see him out there is, looks like they waved off the bucket. They're gonna actually have Anderson inbound underneath the hoop. So they give that foul to Trey Clark, going right back after this flam. T.J. Porter tried to get the left hand in there, but couldn't get it to fall. Pull up from the corner, no good offensive rebound for Furman. And the overwhelming stat in this game, six rebounds already for Furman, only two for Charleston Southern. CSU's got to force some misses. Gurley with a mismatch. What defense. Travis Anderson outsized by nearly nine inches, and he stayed on Gurley the whole way. If everyone was playing like this, Charleston Southern would be winning right now. Noah Gurley is listed at 6'8", 210. You could argue he's 6'9". Well, Travis Anderson is listed at six foot 175, two seconds on the shot clock, just throwing it up, and it bounces and rattles around, nearly falling. CSU looking to push the pace. Fleming, left hand, beautiful job behind the back. As the tempo's starting to pick up a little bit. And that plays into CSU's favor, I believe. You wanna attack off these misses and take it to the bucket if you're Charleston Southern. Drive, initiate some contact, get Furman in foul trouble. Lions looks to drive, pull up jumper from the free throw line, nothing but net. He said he was silky smooth earlier. It's another silky shot. Right down the middle as Flan Fleming holding the ball, dishes it off to Jones. T.J. Porter is going to drive, Euro step, and there's going to call a travel. They said he took one too many steps. I didn't see it. Did you? It didn't look like it to me. As Porter heads his way back down the floor. Here's another look at it. Number 23, Sean Price. He did take three steps. In the NBA, that's not a travel. Unfortunately, it's this college basketball. So there's the travel and a turnover. CSU just three of 10 shooting so far. Furman, 50%. Mounts, wing three from Slauson. Bingo. Furman with very high percentage shots, using the inside outside game to get it going. Quick swing out to Lewis for three, too long. Great rebound by Sean Price who keeps it alive. Jones holding it up top, tries to dish it down low. That pass is intercepted as Furman pushes the tempo back up the floor. Mounts for three, and he hits it. Clay mounts, and there's going to be a timeout called by Charleston Southern. Furman has opened up a 14-point lead early here in the first half. Back-to-back -back turnovers for CSU, back-to-back -back threes for Furman. This one, the latest from Clay Mounts, his second of the game already. You can't leave Clay Mounts that wide open. He's going to burn you every single time. Absolutely, he sure will. Mounts six points, all six coming from beyond the arc. Noah oh, Gurley having himself a pretty good first half as well. Seven points and four rebounds already. It's the big guys. And these two are underclassmen also. Well, Mounts is a junior, Gurley a sophomore. The future's bright, but of course for Furman, the most impactful player night in and night out, senior guard Jordan Lyons, who already has four. And Lyons, he's gonna get his. I'm sure we'll call his name plenty as this evening continues on, as there's gonna be an offensive foul. They're gonna get Sedarius Bowser on it as he comes jogging back right after he checked into the game. Barclay not what he drew up in the timeout. Furman on an 8-0 run. 
There's Mike Bothwell fresh into the game. Move it around, mounts for three again, and he hits it again. Clay mounts. Wide open. Somebody put a hand in his face. Get there. Price swing it around. Bowser up top. There's going to be another whistle and another offensive foul. This one on Nate Lewis, and he comes walking back with his hands in the air asking what he did. It was a moving screen is what he did. He put a body on mounts, and he did not have his feet set. Furman can make it a 20-point lead on this possession. Slauson over to Clark. He had room for the three. He's going to drive. Mounts gets it now. Swing it outside, and that one went right to Barclay Radabaugh, and that one will take us to a timeout. 23-6, to an 11-0 run for Furman as the Paladins have opened up a big-time lead here in Charleston. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to make me do it. I don't care how much they paid. You put on that nose and ears or I'll take off yours. Now everybody smile. Sent off. Feeling good? Oh, yeah. Now I'm ready to focus on my project. This is why we plan. Oof. You never cease to amaze me, Mike. See how investing with a JP Morgan advisor can help you. Visit your local Chase branch. Go back into college basketball on ESPN. Remember, Big South fans, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Be sure to visit geico.com today as Charleston Southern, a very rough first eight minutes or so, down 23 to six. They haven't scored in nearly two and a half minutes. Anderson for three, trying to break it, he can't. Bowser comes down on the offensive board though. Busky for three, still no good. Still have not hit a three pointer tonight at the Bucks. 0 of six from behind the stripe on the other end of the court. The guys wearing purple, four of seven. That's the difference in this game. Here's shot number eight. Make it five of eight. Three pointer for Mark Barthwell. Charleston Southern now down by 20. It's not desperation time yet. They're still in it. There's a lot of time to play, more than 30 minutes, but they've got to start making something. Air ball from Lysander. Flynn Fleming was there, though. Gets it down to Bowser. Off the glass, gets it in there, finally ending the run. It was 14-0, make it 14-2. First bucket in nearly three minutes for the box. The scoring helps, but Furman still 10 of 16 shooting. You've got to play tighter on the defensive end, and not yet. Turnaround jumper by Alex Hunter. This Furman team just can't miss right now. Ride the wave, Paladins. Six for their last seven from the floor. Fleming holding it, gets a screen from Bowser. Trying to get a switch, he goes up. Back iron, no good. Rebound brought in by Bothwell. They get it back to him. He's going to look to drive on Fleming. Fish off to Mounts. He couldn't find the handle on it. Dished around another three. This one finally no good. Interesting to see if Charleston Southern will slow it down or speed it up. 
Well, there's a turnover. Flan Fleming lost the handle on the ball, going up for it. And a little windmill jam from Jalen Slauson. Another timeout from Barclay Radeball. He's got to rally his troops. These guys look defeated right now. If you just look at the expressions on their face, it appears they figure it out that they're a little overmatched in this one. 30 to eight, Jalen Slauson just put number 30 in with a little mini windmill. There he is, sophomore from Somerville. Local guy here and he certainly showed out right there. Exactly right, putting on for the hometown team here in Charleston. He's from about 15 minutes away, played high school ball, Pinewood Prep, I believe, is that correct? I have to take a look at it. I believe you are correct. Yes. Pinewood Prep. He did. A Pine private Wood school. Prep. Small school. Competes in the Skiza League. But right now for Furman, the thing that is going overwhelmingly right is their teamwork. Sounds simple, but you've got six different players who have scored, led by Clay Mounts' nine points on only four shot attempts. Very efficient, three of four from the floor. You've got no one shooting less than 50% from the field, and that's Jordan Lyons, who's two of four, their best player. Everyone else shooting at least 60% from the floor. Gurley heads back out there. There's CSU trying to do anything to get a little bit of a run of their own going. We'll trail by 22 currently. Fleming to Buskey, turn around three, in and out, can't get it to fall. Gurley grabs the board. Such a good look too. Gurley coming right down the lane, lays it in off the front iron, no good. TJ Porter back in with the board and he'll dribble it across the timeline. What an asset TJ Porter is at six foot seven, six foot eight, being able to bring the ball up the court. And a little bit of a look, tried to go back door with a give and go to Bowser. Fleming, deep three, in and out. Porter tried to go up for the board, but Gurley was there to box him out. Two good looks rimming out. It's just bad luck right now for Charleston Southern. They're going to start hitting these shots at some point. Oh, of eight from beyond the arc. Steal from Fleming. Trying to go coast to coast, he's gonna go up. And it looks like it's blocked from behind. Here comes Furman. Mounts driving his whole way, laying it in, finger roll. And that just seems like that's how the night's gone for CSU. And that was Somerville native Jalen Slauson starting it with the block on the other end. And then Mounts finishing it off the break with the easy finger roll at the basket. Buskey, nice little bounce pass to Bowser, and he can't get that to fall. Fleming came on behind the back of the head of Slauson. Lucky no whistle was there. Mounts, handoff to Lyons. Hunter. Mounts, pull up three into the corner of the rim. Looks like he had another one right there. All the way across the floor to Lewis. Lewis dishes out to Bowser, to Porter, to Buskey in the corner three. No good. Still 0 of 9 from beyond the arc for the Bucks. They cannot buy a three-pointer. 5 of 10 for Furman. 50%. Lions with Lewis on him. Now he's doubled up. Able to get it out of his hands. Hunter, deep three. Back iron, no good. Ball bounces around. And Mounts comes away with the offensive board. It's where Furman's length really has an advantage in this one on the offensive boards. Hunter's going to drive, and he is going to be fouled by T.J. Porter. And you go back to Charleston Southern's last three missed three-pointers. They've all been open looks for the most part. Just can't buy a bucket. CSU hasn't scored in four minutes. They're one of their last 11. We'll see a Barclay Rada ball get draw up out of this timeout. 
Big dreams start with small steps, but dedication can get you there. Easily set, track, and control your goals right from the Chase mobile app. Chase, make more of what's yours. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to make me do it. I don't care how much they paid. You put on that nose and ears or I'll take off yours. Now everybody smile. Thanksgivers, for the gingerbread architects and the midnight snackers. For all the families, big, small, chosen, and frozen. Whatever you give, however you gather, we're thinking of you. Welcome back in Big South Basketball on ESPN. And I want to thank one of the sponsors, Marriott, the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference. The best rates booked directly with Marriott by heading to BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott. You will support Big South student athletes in the process. Well, Evan, it has not been a pretty start for CSU as we'll come out of the break with Alex Hunter heading to the line for a one and one. And out of this timeout, what was Barclay Radabas saying to his guys to try and get them out of this funk? Well, more than anything, it's mental. They are getting open looks from behind the three-point line. They've just got to start driving and trusting each other more. And specifically for Flan Fleming, he's really, really got to get something going. He's one of six. And if CSU is going to get themselves back in this game at all, he, it has to start with him, through him. He's got to get something. Well, that foul, trying to get anything going on Colin Kenny, the freshman who just checked in. Third team foul for Furman. 34 to eight. CSU hasn't scored in nearly four and a half minutes now. Lewis to Jones, Fleming. Ball movement from CSU as the shot clock hasn't been running this entire time. Back to Jones. And the officials just now realize it and they're gonna have to go and try to sort things out. You caught it before the Zebras did. Hey, ask him if it's underneath. Coming over to the replay monitor, they're gonna take a look. 34 to eight. If they get a look at it, they'll do some counting and we'll do some more talking. Of course, that we can do. We certainly can as Barclay Radabaugh brings his team over right in front of us. You just look at the numbers and we can continue to hit you over the head with them, but four and a half minutes they haven't scored. Furman on an 8-0 run or 26 to six over the last 10 minutes. They say nine seconds on the shot clock, but one of the things we talked about coming in, you gotta hit your threes, and CSU just hasn't. And there hasn't even been anything overwhelmingly bad. They haven't turned the ball over at a tremendously high clip, only six on the game, but they haven't gone to the line at all. They've gotta start attacking the basket and getting some more calls. They need some freebies to really settle down. As Ty Jones misses three-point attempt number 10, Hunter tries to push the tempo. He's going to slow it down as Travis Anderson was in his way. Which Radabaugh onto his feet trying to get his defense. You get a stop. Out of 10 seconds. That one's dished down low, ripped away by Nate Lewis. Here comes Anderson trying to go coast to coast. He goes up off the glass, no good. Offensive rebound, and he's rejected. What a block right there from 
Number zero, that's Trey Clark. Clark gets it, dishes to the corner to Kenny. Anderson was there, Bothwell into the painted area and there's gonna be a travel and a turnover. Fifth one of the night for Furman. In the game with the Charleston Southern needs a lot more of that. And if you look at this game for them, Furman is so talented, we know that. And we really, really figured that out the other night after they got by Loyola Chicago by 24 points in their home opener. Loyola Chicago, a team that went to the final four just two years ago. So this Furman Paladin team, like we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, coming off a school record, 28 wins. They're going to win a lot of basketball games this year. Charleston Southern still finding their footing as a young team. Buskey for three, rolls in, rolls out. Here come the Paladins. Download a girlie who's back in the game. He tries to drive on Jones, right hand, in and out, can't get that to fall. Busky comes down with the board. Trying Whenever to get into the double digits. Eight, that hook shot is nearly <laughs> undefendable. And you can't do anything about against that. Just pray it doesn't go in. We're gonna give a foul to Gurley. Right, when you're six foot eight, six foot nine, we were talking about it. He's probably got at least a seven foot wingspan. When he jumps up there, he can practically just set the ball in the hoop. And he affects the game in so many ways. If he extends his range a little more, you're looking at an all Southern Conference style player. Fleming in the corner drives baseline, handoff to Jones. Lysander for three. Iron can't get it. Fleming trying to jump up and bat the ball around, but Furman comes down with the board. Driving is Bothwell, he hits the deck, no foul. Fleming brings it the other way. Dishes it off to Anderson, nice pass, lays it in off the glass, first bucket in six and a half minutes. Woo. I was sweating that one, I think Barclay Radebaugh was too. I'm surprised he still has his jacket on, but it's energized this gym. You can hear it, the noise. The bench is trying to get the team into it. That one, perfect pass down low. In and out, no good. Lions couldn't get that to fall. Fleming to Buskey. Buskey's gonna drive, dish to Anderson. He thought about the three. He goes in and there's a turnover and he lost his shoe. Three from Lions, no good. Offensive rebound, easy put back from Clark and we're gonna have a stoppage as Anderson goes back to pick up his shoe. We were just talking about Noah Gurley's length. That was the difference in that turnover and that basket. Furman ahead 36 to 10. Check it out. I'm not gonna do it, you're not gonna make me do it. I don't care how much they paid. You put on that nose and ears or I'll take off yours. Now everybody smile. First fight, they call him the prospect. He's the pride of Mexico. Sarah's last tuition payment sent off. Feeling good? Oh, yeah. Now I'm ready to focus on my project. This is why we plan. Oof. You never cease to amaze me, Mike. See how investing with a J.P. Morgan advisor can help you. Visit your local Chase branch. Lock it, find it, start it from anywhere with Remote Connect. Back into Big South basketball on ESPN and make sure you can get social with the Big South. Join the always growing network of Big South fans on Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram, and more. And you can follow the Conflict Source for game updates and on-site championship coverage on Twitter at Big South Game Day. And if you're watching this one, be sure to tweet at us. We'd love to know where you are and who you're supporting. Good thoughts, bad thoughts. Any thoughts at all? Any thoughts? If you have them, share them. What's your Twitter handle? Mine is at JK McClatchy. What's yours? At TV underscore Evan. Well, they might have to tweet at you. Might be a little bit tougher to find me. 10-4. 36-10. Back to basketball after that turnover by CSU. Backdoor oh. mount. Slams it home. Perfectly drawn up play from Furman. This one to Jones, he's gonna drive, goes up and he's fouled and heading to the line for the first time with 3.11 left in the first half. What a genius call on the other end by Bob Ritchie to draw that play up out of a timeout, executed to perfection. And this is the foul on the other end. Thank goodness, it's about time Charleston Southern goes to the stripe. As Ty Jones knocks it down. This is a CSU team shooting 51% from the charity stripe. And here's another look at that dunk on the back door. Jones converts them both. 38-12 now. There's two points tonight for Jones. Bothwell gets it. Looks around the screen, three from Furman. Nothing but net, absolute money. It's been the status quo all night. This around up top, hand off to Buskey. Buskey out to Lewis for three. Can't get it to fall. Fleming's though there for the offensive rebound. Fleming. Gets a screen from Jones, trying to figure out where he wants to go. Looks to drive baseline, dished out, pump from Lewis to the corner. T.J. Porter, still no good. 0 of 14 for three. That's gotta be close to a record. This is turning into one of those situations. It's a bit of a cliche, but there's another beautiful pass to Mounts and he practically hung in the air and won. Buskey's gonna get tagged with it. Goodness gracious, Clay Mounts, it looked like he was levitating. He just kind of put his defender's head on a swivel, tricked him out there to go back door, cut to the basket, and it was a great pass as well. Trying to convert this and one. Flan Fleming gonna come over and take a little bit of a break before halftime. You're saying 0 for 14 now for CSU from beyond the arc. It's a bit of cliche, but it actually seems like there is a lid over the top of the hoop. Well, you know, outside there's a big cold front coming in, temperature dropping be below 50 degrees, and Charleston Southern basketball players can feel that cold because no warmth at all when it comes to shooting the basketball. They can't get hot. 17% from the floor, 0 of 14 from beyond the arc. Price fresh into the game. Porter looks to drive right hand, back iron no good. Mounts with the rebound. Here comes Bothwell. Hand back off to Mounts, deep three. Hits it. Clay Mounts again. A lid for CSU, a wide open basket for Clay Mounts. Three of five from behind the three point line. Make that four of six. 18 points in the first half from Clay Mounts and Furman has blown this game even further open than they had before. Jones, free throw line, jumper, no good. Mounts hits the deck, but comes away with the board. At Bothwell. this rate, Clay Mounts will just sit on the bench for the entire second half. He wouldn't have to do anything for the rest of the night, and he'd have a very good stat line. As we're gonna take a look at some of these threes, a lot of them from that man, Clay Mounts. Seven of 14. It's been him, but it's been a couple of other guys as well. Jalen Slauson has hit one. Pugh Bothwell, you've got a couple of guys contributing off the bench. So it's not just Clay Mounts, but he has had a tremendous hand in it so far. 19 points, like you mentioned. This guy, this junior, well on the way 
to just getting a breather for the last 20 minutes of this game. Well, he had a career high 26 points in their victory over Gardner Webb, and he's well on the way of shattering that. 19 points on seven and nine shooting, four of six from beyond the arc, and he's also got four rebounds to tack on to it. And more than that, he's just a smart player. He makes the right play. He's always in the right spot, and he makes good decisions with the basketball. Bothwell back door in and out of the hands of Jalen Pugh. As Barclay Radabaugh frustrated with the defense after that one, a big slap of his hands as he leapt out of his seat. We're under 60 seconds in the first half of basketball. Jones, crossover, drive, right hand, lays it in. There's a bucket. Give the fans here in the Buck Dome something to clap about. Now keep it going on the defensive end. You've got a little momentum. Don't let Furman score again. That one given off to Ben Beaker. Driving, back in the game is Kenny. He backs it down. Driving is Bothwell, left hand, and he is fouled. The head bobbed back, and he will head to the free throw line with 25.4 on the clock. You just saw Jordan Lyons coaching up the freshman, Ben Beaker. This is why their program is so successful, because you've got leadership like Lyons, who is always setting his teammates straight. He's a floor general. He's more than a scorer. He's like another coach on the floor. It's so nice with college basketball, and you see it in some of these smaller conferences, the Big South, the Southern Conference. You get those seniors out there, and they really are so valuable to a program. Exactly, and Charleston Southern would have won in Christian Keeling, maybe the most talented player in a matchup of two good teams tonight, but he's at the University of North Carolina right now as a graduate transfer. Barclay Radeball has coached a lot of great players over his tenure here at Charleston Southern. In fact, one of them sitting on the bench right now, Saw Nimley, former Big South All first teamer, now his assistant coach. Bucks. Looks like they're going to try and hold the ball as the shot clock is off. Goes off to Anderson. Back to Fleming. Deep three. Short. Air ball, and it goes out of bounds. Furman will get one last touch of the ball before we head to the break. Three seconds left. So you don't want to get them up. an open look. Here's Lyons. He pushes it one second. It goes up off the front iron. I don't think it was out of his hands in time anyways. But Furman comes out and absolutely dominates the first 20 minutes. It's 48-14 as we head to the break from the Bucto. Geico makes it easy to get help when I need it. With licensed agents available 24-7, it's not just easy. It's having Jerome Bettis on your flag football team easy. Go get him, bus! <laughs> Ooh. Come on, bus, come on! Hey, wait, wait, wait! I'm gonna get the flag! I got your flag! I'm gonna get your flag! It's Geico Easy, yeah. with licensed agents available 24 7. 49 nothing! Oh. <laughs> Boom boy! Discover the new language of travel. Bon Voy. Marriott Bon Voy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences. Rewards reimagined.
Welcome back into the Geico Halftime Report inside the Buck Dome as the Furman Paladins are absolutely dominating this basketball game, 48-14. We're going to take a look at some of the highlights, and there is a lot coming from the team in purple. The students' checks have showed out tonight, but they've had a tough one so far, a 36-8 run over the final 14 minutes. Yeah, the stu student section showing out also Clay Mounts, the junior for Furman, with an incredible 19 points, just seven off of his season high, I do believe. For Charleston Southern, you've done a few good things, but not nearly enough. Land Fleming with his only basket of the half. He's one of seven from the floor. Meanwhile, Jordan Lyons, the best player on the court for Furman, He's had an impact, but it hasn't been in the scoring department. That's all Clay Mounds. Of course, right here, Bowser, Sedarius Bowser, getting a nice touch off the glass, but it is 48 to 14. Furman on top of this one. We've got more basketball coming up in just about 10 minutes here from the Buck Dome in North Charleston. I'm not gonna do it. You're not gonna make me do it. I don't care how much they paid. You put on that nose and ears or I'll take off yours. Now everybody smile. Sarah's last tuition payment sent off. Feeling good? Oh, yeah. Now I'm ready to focus on my project. This is why we plan. Oof. You never cease to amaze me, Mike. See how investing with a J.P. Morgan advisor can help you. Visit your local Chase branch. Gingerbread architects and the midnight snackers. For all the families, big, small, chosen, and frozen. Whatever you give, however you gather, we're thinking of you. I am a veteran. I spent two years alone and homeless. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. My victory was finding the support to get back on my feet. DAV helps veterans of every generation get the benefits they've earned. I'm a veteran. When I got out, I felt like nowhere was safe. So veterans can reach victories, great and small. My victory was finding the help I needed. Thanks to DAV, now I feel like I'm human again. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Rain-X premium silicone wiper blades last two times longer than traditional wipers. If Rain-X premium silicone wipers survive these conditions, clearly they'll last in yours. Rain-X, outsmart the elements. Did you start the car? Uh-huh. Go, 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 go. Lock it, find it, start it. From anywhere with remote connection. Back in the Geico Halftime Report from Charleston, South Carolina, Charleston Southern, trailing the Furman Paladins 48 to 14. And we'll take a look at some of the stats. And you see the score like that, they've been a little one-sided. There they are, 54.5% from the floor. That's 18 of 33 for Furman. 
They're 7 of 15 from beyond the arc, and that big 0% next to three points, 0 of 15 for CSU. You've got to look at the positives for CSU. This is going to be a character-building game. They're hitting the boards. 17 rebounds, that's not bad. Of course, you want to make at least one or two three-pointers, and drawing some fouls would really help close this margin out in the second half. They only attempted, man, how many free throws at the break? Only two. Two for two. That That's is it. the number. They're 100% in that category. They need to try to get to the line. We're going to take a look. Some of the other games around the conference going on tonight, and we've got some pretty decent ones going on. And we'll also take a look at the upcoming schedule for both of these teams. Here are the games around the conference. You got Eastern Shore and Longwood up in Farmville. Some of those scores coming in. Campbell and UNC Wilmington and a good one in the second half. What a good one for the Campbells. I mean, the Campbells lost Chris Clemens, a great player who is now with the Houston Rockets in their developmental league, putting UNC Wilmington on the ropes. And we don't have a score up there, but Longwood is cruising over Maryland Eastern Shore. Well, there are the games around the conference. We're gonna take another break. We've been watching the Geico halftime report from the Buck Dome. 48-14, the Paladins with the lead. Big dreams start with small steps, but dedication can get you there. Easily set, track, and control your goals right from the Chase mobile app. Chase, make more of what's yours. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to make me do it. I don't care how much they paid. You put on that nose and ears or I'll take off yours. Now everybody smile. after the lights went out. Alexa, pause my podcast. Alexa, set the temperature at home to 71 degrees. And turn on the lights. Alexa, call Mike. Thanks, hun. Have fun at work. the season's greeters, for all the thanksgivers, for the gingerbread architects and the midnight snackers, for all the families, big, small, chosen and frozen, whatever you give, however you gather, we're thinking of you. Lock it, find it, start it. From anywhere with Remote Connect. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to make me do it. I don't care how much they paid. You put on that nose and ears or I'll take off yours. Now everybody... Go halftime report. The team's making their way back out onto the floor to get loosened up. And we'll show you the upcoming schedules for both these squads. We'll start out with the Furman Paladins who are 2-0 and and the way it's looking well on their way to 3-0. and They've got Southern Wesleyan on Friday, a big one heading to Alabama on November 19th. And a couple other games, Columbia International, a familiar foe for these Bucks. Yeah, and then they're at Elon, another Southern Conference foe, and then at home against Texas Arlington and finishing up the end of the uh, November portion of the schedule, actually beginning December at 
the University of South Florida. Good non-conference slate for Furman. We flip it over to the other side, and boy, oh boy, do things get real interesting for CSU. They start a very long road trip at Dayton on Saturday at Michigan State, their number three on Monday. And you got Southern Utah, who pulled off a big win last week in a tournament, and then Missouri before finally returning home to face off against NC Central. A tough, tough slate. Only two more home games this calendar year for the Bucs, so they are going to be battle-tested on the road whenever non-conference play wraps up. Well, 48-14 is the halftime score. The teams are back out there to get loose. We're gonna take one more break, and we got more basketball for you from the Buck Dome on the other side. GEICO makes it easy to get help when I need it. With licensed agents available 24-7, it's not just easy. It's having Jerome Bettis on your flag football team easy. Go get him, bus! <laughs> oh. Come on, bus. Come on. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Hey, man, I got your flag. I got your flag, man. I got your flag. It's Geico Easy yeah. with licensed agents available 24-7. 49 nothing. Woo! Yeah. One point. Two more. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Oh, boy. Bon boy. Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bonvoy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences. Rewards, reimagine. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Perez open three, yes! Excellent. The will to compete persists down here. It's for the win! You this is the Big South, where winners are made. Musco Lighting, we make it happen. Back in college basketball from Charleston Southern University, the Furman Paladins up big, 34 point lead as we get ready to start off the second half as Furman, a pretty good road team, 18 and two in their last 20 non-conference matchups. They're on a six game true road winning streak. And in this matchup, the home teams won each of the last seven. We're well on the way to possibly snapping that streak. It's going to take a ridiculous comeback from Charleston Southern, down by 34 at half. Only 14 first half points. Really missing starting point guard Dontrell Schuler tonight, who's out nursing a hip injury, actually recovering from surgery that he had in the offseason. They need him back. They miss his toughness. Well, we're going to see what CSU can get going out of the break as Flan Fleming gets doubled up and he's stripped away. Here comes Hunter the other way for the Paladins. And quickly, things are already starting off not on a positive note for CSU. A 34-point deficit for CSU, but they've got their our starters out there. Furman rolling their starters out there as well. Alex Hunter hits a three, and that's how the second half gets started scoring-wise, 51 to 14. Anderson's gonna look to drive. A little bit of a poke from Mounts, no whistle. Rebound brought in by Gurley, that's his ninth. That one intercepted by Flan Fleming. Dribbled his head up the whole way down the floor, and he gets that poked out of his hand. CSU will retain possession, though. Charleston Southern still looking for their first three-point field goal of the evening. Good active hands right there on defense 
from Alex Hunter. Buskey looks to drive baseline, has to pick up his dribble. Down low, T.J. Porter pumps once, goes up, lays in and off the glass. Nice move from the youngster. A very good move. I like what this freshman does. We talked about how he has the ability to bring the ball up. Also has attempted a three-pointer tonight. He adds that to his game on a consistent basis. Watch out, Big South. Jalen Slauson, a little turnaround hook shot, arcing it over T.J. Porter, who was playing some pretty good defense there. Anderson gets tripped up in the corner. The ball rolls to Lysander, though. Porter holding it up top. Buskey back to Porter, smooth pass. Fleming for three. Front iron, no good. Slauson with the board. Here Fleming comes Hunter. crashing it like he knew that ball wasn't falling. He can't find a shot tonight. Only one of eight from the field. Hunter with Flynn in his face. Mounts for three. Back iron, no good. He nearly dropped that in. It would have been his fifth three-pointer of the night. Fleming spins, tries to get that one through the paint, but Mounts intercepts it. Slauson handed off to Lyons. Dishes it down low. There goes to be a travel, though. Lyons took too many steps, and there's an early turnover. Got to give it up to Jalen Slauson, the sophomore for Furman. No Butterflies coming back home and playing in front of his hometown crowd, his family here at the game. He started Pinewood Prep. He's from Somerville, South Carolina, just down the road. Back underway. Ty Jones checks back in. Calling for Clan Fleming to clear out. Going a little ISO. Step back. Front eye are no good. Hunter. As Buskey picks him up as he crosses the timeline. Spinning around, Gurley, right hand lays it in. Noah Gurley, he's so long, it just looks too easy for him. It does. Very fundamentally sound. His footwork is excellent. And he has a really easy time around the basket. At least he makes it look that way. Buskey over to the corner. Malik battle for three. Finally, the lid comes off the bucket. Malik Battle hits the first three of the night. It only took 15 attempts, but better late than never. 55 to 19, one of 16 from the floor is Charleston Southern. You gotta give a lot of credit to that Furman defense. What a move from Alex Hunter, putting his defender on skates. Shake and bake. 57, 19 now. Battle, who's in the game. That was his second bucket of his college career, by the way. Buskey, deep three. Back to back. The Bucks starting to feel themselves a little bit from beyond the arc. Now all they need to do is get a couple stops on the other end. The key is to not let Hunter, Gurley, or Mounts get it going. Gurley backing down Jones. He gets doubled. Ball swiped away by Lazander, but it rolls right back to Slauson. Another double. This time, Flan Fleming comes across. Hunter's able to pick it up. Mismatch, step back three. No good. Rebound brought down by Buskey. Dishes it down low to Fleming, who loses control, and the ball will be coming back the other way. They say that the bucket was on top of the lid, or the lid was on the bucket. Yeah. All you got to do is take it off. And they did, hit back-to-back -back threes on back-to-back -back right, possession. CSU trying to reel this thing back in. Geico makes it easy to get help when I need it. With licensed agents available 24-7, it's not just easy. It's having Jerome Bettis on your flag football team easy. Go get him, bus! <laughs> oh. Come on, boss. Come on. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I got the flag. I got your flag. I got the flag. It's Geico Easy yeah. with licensed agents available 24 7. 49 nothing. Oh. <laughs> Boom boy. One boy. 
Discover the new language of travel. Bon boy. Marriott Bonvoy. 30 hotel brands, endless experiences, rewards reimagined. Hard work, a love for the game, is mandatory down here. Sacrifice, a desire to be great, lives down here. Perez open three, yes! Excellence, the will to compete, persists down here. This is the Big South, where winners are made. Back in for the best in Big South coverage. Make sure you visit BigSouthSports.com. You can stay current with the latest news, results, stats, standings, and so much more. You can enjoy video features showcasing the student athletes or connect to your favorite school sites or social media outlets. Remember the source for all your Big South news is BigSouthSports.com as Charleston Southern trying to put a little bit of momentum and finish off this game strong as they finally hit their first three-pointer as we head to the under-16 timeout. Lions step back, jumper, and he hits it. He's been money from there all night long. He sure has, and a pretty quiet night statistically. Only six points on the evening, but he doesn't have to have a score to make an impact on this game. We've seen him do it with his passing, with his defense. He's made a big difference tonight. Jones crossover, step back, too short off the front iron. He had Gurley fumbling around a little bit with his sneakers, but couldn't hit the J. Ball being cycled around. Lions again into the paint, dishes off to Gurley. And Flan Fleming playing some good defense there, jumped in front of that ball. He has a bit of a mismatch too. Fleming, six foot four, Gurley, Six foot eight with a long wingspan. Fleming has done his best to hold him in check. Nine points, 10 boards, a near double-double for Gurley. Lions for three and he's fouled on it. Ty Jones is gonna get tagged with that one as one of the first free throws of the second half going to Jordan Lyons. Here's another look at it and just that Late touch after the release. That is a foul. The refs will call that every time. 59-22, Lions heading to the line for the first time tonight. You mentioned he's the leading scorer, came into it averaging 16 and a half for the first two games. He now has seven points. It was a relatively quiet night for him besides that. Just one rebound, one assist. Mm -hmm. But really, you mentioned he's the senior out there, he's the senior leader, and that's where his presence is really being felt. And the defense hones in on him so much. So he's gonna open up things for other guys, and just because his stats aren't what we're used to seeing, he still had an impact on this game. His team still up by 39 points. Travis Anderson checks in, as well as Jalen Pugh. We wait for the third of these three free throws from the senior from Peachtree City, Georgia, and he hits all three. Golf cart capital of the world. How about that? Spitting out the fun fact for us, Evan West. There you go. Anderson drives baseline. A little bit of a push, but it's clean. And he gets it in there. Good bucket from Travis Anderson. Going back the other way now. Bothwell had to pick up his dribble. Gets it to Pew. Tight defense from Sean Price. Lions working on the freshman Malik Battle. He's going to drive. Great defense from Battle. He's going to come away with a strip, and he's bringing it all the way. Dish to the corner. Three from Fleming. No good. He was chasing down his own rebound before it even hit the iron, but he couldn't get there. Fleming cannot buy a bucket tonight. He's just not feeling it. One of nine from the floor, 0 of five from behind the arc. Screen court gets it off of it, into the paint, right hand, lays it in. Trey Clark, second bucket of the night, two for two from the floor. Price hands it off to Fleming, and nearly gets tripped up. 
with a 40 point difference in the game. I'll be surprised to see how much longer Bob Ritchie plays his starting lineup out here. Fleming goes up and there is going to be an offensive foul on Flan Fleming and he will walk back down the floor. The second foul of the night. And his fifth turnover. And the turnovers, that's one of the numbers we talked about at the top, points off of turnovers. And Furman has certainly dominated that category. 23 points, they can tack onto it if they put a bucket in here, but 23 to six in that category. Bothwell to Gurley, who's calling out the offense from the wing. And a drive on Sedarius Bowser and backing him down. Goes up, right hand front iron, and there is a foul on Sedarius Bowser. That's Noah Gurley for you. It's very patient. It's not gonna work too quick. Gets around the corner and he gets hit on the elbow. Bowser hasn't played much tonight, just six minutes. That's his second foul. The first free throw up and good from Noah Gurley. That yeah. gives him a double, double double on the evening. 10 points, 10 rebounds. He's having himself a good night. Fayetteville, Georgia native. And he hits them both as some changes coming back in. Ben Beaker comes back in for Gurley. Anderson dribbles it across. Lysander to Bowser. And there's going to be a whistle down on the floor underneath the basket. Nice huddle from both teams to reconvene. We got Mike Bothwell underneath his first. Anderson gets it into Bowser. Pull up jumper. Takes a little bit of a ring around the iron, but it eventually falls. Very nice play by Sedarius Bowser. This is a time for experience for both teams. For Furman, you've got some of your guys who don't see a lot of playing time, so solid experience for them. On the flip side, for CSU, these are some contributors and people who are counted on just about game in and game out. They need to win this portion of the game. The late battle coming back after the nifty finish by Trey Clark. Nice bucket from the freshman from Atlanta. Bothwell trying to drive on Anderson. Has to pick up his dribble, looking for anywhere to go with the ball. And it's batted right back to him. As he'll reset things with 10 on the shot clock. Anderson hits the deck, deep three, and he hits it. I was going to say, great defense, Sedarius Bowser denying the pass, but the hard screen took Anderson out, gave the Paladins a wide open shot. Corner three from Anderson, there you go. Starting to get things rolling from beyond the arc in the second half. He's been one of the bright spots in this game for CSU. He's played hard defense all night. He's made a couple of nice passes, and he finally knocking down the three too. Offensive rebound as there was nobody there to box out Colin Kenny. Kenny, corner three, no good. Bowser comes away with a rebound. 40 point deficit for the box as trying to drive and getting tripped up a little bit is Duncan Lysander. He'll get helped up by his teammates. It's 71 31. The Furman Paladins have been open up a big time lead, but CSU. Trying to build on some positives to finish out the night. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to make me do it. I don't care how much they paid. You put on that nose and ears or I'll take off yours.
Now everybody smile. Sarah's last wish and payment sent off. Feeling good? Oh, yeah. Now I'm ready to focus on my project. This is why we plan. Oof. You never cease to amaze me, Mike. See how investing with a J.P. Morgan advisor can help you. Visit your local Chase branch. Back in college basketball on ESPN is brought to you by Sunbelt Rentals. We have equipment for that. Be sure to stay tuned after the conclusion of tonight's game. We'll give you the Sunbelt Rentals star player. And there are a couple options. One of them being Clay Mounts, 19 points. I haven't really seen much of him, but he's back out there on the floor now out of the under 12 media timeout, ball being slung around, Malik Battle pull up Jay and he hits it. How about that? There's a positive for you, the youngster Malik Battle. A great play there. I'm surprised to see Noah Gurley and Clay Mounts back in this game for Furman. Obviously Bob Ritchie looking to continue to build some chemistry with this young group. There's Mounts who just reaches over the top of Flan Fleming for that board. 19 and five. As Hunter spins around, Slauson deep three. Back iron, no good. Rebound brought back in by Lyons who goes up and he lays it in. That is a man who is 5'11", who just ripped down an offensive rebound and put back up the second chance point. Just split the defense. 5'11", but he's built like a running back. The dude is stout. That one trying to go back door. TJ Porter, nice pass, better finish from TJ. He's played well tonight. I'm sure it's tough for head coach Mark Lay Radabaugh to look back at this and find those positives. And he is a coach that he doesn't like to look at the negatives. He likes to try and spin it every single time, even in a game like this. I know coach will find another way. As Mounts goes up, there's a good defense and block by Flan Fleming as it looked like he got a piece of it. As Flan... Brings it across, looks to drive. Dishes it out for Battle, who had to reel in that one. Spin back out, TJ Porter for three, no good. Flan will go and get the board in the corner though. He's gonna turn, drive, dish back out. Porter, jumper no good off the front iron, but as I was saying, Coach is one of those guys, he tries to find the positives, and you can look at guys like TJ Porter and Malik and say, all right, those are some things that we can work on and go forward with. And Barclay won't make any excuses for his team, but I will. They're missing Dontrell Schuler. He is the key in the cog, the guy who makes everything go, their point guard, their best defender, and there's no doubt he'd make a difference tonight. I don't know if he'd be enough to close. The league battle again as we were talking about him, and he's getting some extra minutes that Schuler is out, but continue. I'm not sure if he'd be enough to close a 36 point difference, but he would make a difference. There's no doubt about that. There's gonna be a turnover as it comes back CSU's way. And I think this is gonna be one of those games where when it's all said and done, you're gonna look back on it and go. As here's another look at Malik Battle, that nifty little bucket right there, but they're going to look back on this and say, man, what if, what if Dontrell Schuler played this game? Would they have won? Would the Bucks have come away with a win? Who knows? Mm -hmm. But would it be a lot closer than this? You'd have to assume so. You definitely do. And you mentioned it. There's a steal from Slauson, and he slams it home, tucking the hand back behind his head. And they're going to have to stop and fix the net. Jalen Slauson, another big-time jam, and that will take us to the under-eight. 
That man's having himself a big night. He's back home, Somerville native, slamming it down with style. Go it down. I'm not gonna do it, you're not gonna make me do it. I don't care how much they paid. You put on that nose and ears or I'll take off yours. Now everybody smile. Big dreams start with small steps, but dedication can get you there. Easily set, track, and control your goals right from the Chase mobile app. Chase, make more of what's yours. Solo es trabajo. Protege los dos. The first fight, they call him the prospect. ¿Quién es este chico peludo? Punching less, landing more. The unthinkable just happened. He lost the bout. He gets up. El orgullo de Guadalajara. 53 fights and a story for me. One step closer to making his real fight. It's yet to come. Lock it, find it, start it from anywhere with Remote Connect. Find the best variety of officially licensed merchandise in conference and school branded items at BigSouthStore.com. You can gear up with some new apparel or find that perfect gift as the holiday season is right around the corner. Get fully equipped for all your game day fun with BigSouthStore.com, a beautiful shot of downtown Charleston. A little rainy tonight, but a little chilly as well, but it's nice inside the Buck Dome here as there's gonna be a foul. Travis Anderson drove, and it's gonna be a foul called on Alex Hunter. That was a look at historic King Street, but here inside the Buck Dome, Here's a big time three from Sean Price. That's his first bucket of the game, getting it in there, first shot of the game as well. Mm -hmm. As I was saying though, still the Paladins, three point shooting, that has reigned royal, made all the difference in this one. Although CSU finally getting a little momentum from behind the arc here in the second half. Four of six from behind the arc. Four of six in the second half, and they were 0 of 15 in the first 20 minutes of basketball, and that's part of the reason why this deficit is as large as it is. Going up big time, block from Flan Fleming. Coming back the other way, dishes it off to Ty Jones, nearly loses the handle of it, and then it's thrown into the bench. A little out of control for the Bucks that time down the floor. Right about pulls Fleming in, gives some a pat on the back tells them to just play a little safer. They'll get him next time. Try to push the tempo. Malik Battle back into the game, getting some minutes tonight. He's taking advantage of them. Nine points, 100% shooting tonight. Those Lions. This is an over Slauson. Big time mismatch working on Battle. Turns around too easy. Drops it right in the center. Nothing there that Malik Battle can do. I'm telling you. And between Slauson and Gurley and Mounts, I mean, Mounts is like a teenager. He lives in the back door. He's always sneaking out away from his defender. Couldn't get open there, but Slauson got it back on the other end. What about a three from Anderson? Second one of the night for him. Double digits. First buck in double digits as... A trap over there in the corner. There's going to be a timeout called by Furman, a smart one called by the Paladins. You see, see Dontrell right? Schuler. That's exactly what I was just about to say. Dontrell Schuler there in that polo. Here's another look at that good trap from the box. Very close to the sideline, but not the timeout called. 
and a veteran play there to call the timeout just to turn around and uh, take the time from Alex Sunner. Smart. 77-42, there is Dontrell Shuler. As we've mentioned all night tonight, not playing tonight, working back. He played in the first two games and there was something Barclay Radeboss said, we wanna ease him back in and he played really well to the first two, leading this team in scoring with 18 per, but just didn't have enough in him tonight to go and he's gonna be a big key going forward in this season. It's not worth re-injuring him and making it worse tonight. It's a long season, that's exactly right. You've got big south play in front of you, so you wanna make sure you're 100% for that. And Schuler's game, really, it changes the dynamic of the CSU offense because it opens up so much. He's not really a three-point threat. He will shoot it up from behind the arc, but he drives so hard and makes the defense collapse, which opens things up for other teammates. And we've seen CSU struggle to get open shots from the three-point line and find a rhythm out there up until the second half. There's the horn as both teams are ready to come out. Big time teaching moment inside the CSU huddle as they'll head on back out. Fleming, Price, Battle, Anderson, and Jones, the five coming out. As Furman will inbound it. A good contingent here supporting Furman. Just about a three to three and a half hour drive up to the upstate. Got a good amount of purple inside the Buck Dome tonight. There's a crossover from Bothwell. Gets it down low to Beaker who gets doubled up quickly. Deep time, three, back iron no good. Offensive board brought in by Clark. As Kenny now holds it up top, working on Anderson. 10 seconds on the shot clock, Bothwell. Stops, turns right hand, and he gets the roll. What a play right there by Bothwell. Spinning him around and then finishing it off with the right hand off the glass. Fleming holds it up top, 79-42. Largest lead was 43 at one point here in the second half. Anderson picks it up. And there's going to be a foul call. They're going to get Colin Kenny on that one. Out of bounds for the Bucks. Quick inbound of Jones, who pumps. And the signs that he's not going to take that shot. Pull up Jay from Flan Fleming. There you go, Flan. Try and get yourself going a little bit. Just the second bucket of the night for him. He looked at his hands and said, finally. There's a travel turnover from Furman. Didi Buskey's going to check back in, but Flan Fleming, it has been a tough night for him. 2 of 10, shooting 0 for 4 beyond the arc. He's got four points, eight boards, and four assists, so he's doing it that way. But knowing Flan, he's a guy that likes to score, and it's tough when he can't. And the defense knows to key in on him, and they have such long defenders there. Fleming kind of plays a four role for the box, so he's going to be guarded against a guy who's six foot five, six foot six in the Big South. But in this case, you've got Noah Gurley and Clay Mounts, who are both six seven and six eight. So he's had a difficult time getting anything going on the offensive end. A lot of length from this Furman team, and this is a team that. He's going to do a lot of damage in the SOCON. They're picked to finish third in the preseason poll behind East Tennessee State and North Carolina Greensville. There's another three for Bothwell. No respect. It'll be a timeout called by Barclay Arreta Ball and CSU. It is 82 to 44 as we are going to take that timeout with them. 82-44, Paladins on top trying to close this thing out. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to make me do it. I don't care how much they paid. You put on that nose and ears or I'll take off yours. Now everybody smile.
dreams start with small steps, but dedication can get you there. Easily set, track, and control your goals right from the Chase mobile app. Chase, make more of what's yours. First bite, they call him the prospect. He's the pride of Mexico. For all the season's greeters, for all the Thanksgivers, for the gingerbread architects and the midnight snackers, for all the families, big, small, chosen and frozen, whatever you give, however you gather, we're thinking of you. Furman Paladins getting ready to extend their road winning streak to seven games, and they hit the road for a couple more tough ones down the line at Alabama, at Elon, and at USF. They have an opportunity to make a statement. Furman starting so well out of the gates last season, they rose to number 23 in the Associated Press Bowl, cooled off around conference play. Of course, they were tested by CSU at home last year, but this year, a different team. One of their best players graduated, but they return quite a bit of talent as evidenced by tonight's game. And four returning starters on this team that won 25 games last year, went to the NIT and fell in the first round, but we've seen anything from tonight. This is definitely a team that's gonna make some noise in the SOCON and maybe even make some noise come March as that ball is stripped away. Clark comes away with it for Furman. Lysander tried to get back there to tie him up. Clark drives baseline, jumps in, lays it in. They'll presumably beat Southern Wesleyan, but if they can go on the road to Alabama and knock the tide off, that'd be quite a statement to start the season. Certainly could be as they're back up by 40. Another timeout called by CSU. But this Furman team, this Furman team been playing well tonight. We're going to take a look at CSU's upcoming schedule as it does not get any easier. It doesn't. The tough tests continue at Dayton, at number three, Michigan State, Southern Utah and Eastern Tennessee State or Delaware State in the tournament before going to Missouri. And then finally back home, December 7th versus North Carolina Central. But I do want to say down 40 points with three and a half minutes left. Clearly, they're not going to win the game, but Barclay Radeball never misses a teaching moment. He calls a timeout, points a few things out to his players. This guy is obsessed with the game of basketball. He loves it, and the only thing he loves more than the game are his players themselves. Certainly true, doing everything that he can, trying to keep involved in this one, keep energy high, even when things aren't going too great. Anderson lobs it up to Bowser, and he's gonna be fouled. And Bowser will head to the free throw line. This will be just the second time all night that CSU is heading to the line there two for two tonight. That is just incredible. And it, I think it goes back to Schuler being out of this game because he is such a good initiator of contact in the post. You haven't really had any creases open up in the lane. Furman doesn't boast a guy who's seven foot, you know, intimidating shot blocker out there, but they have a lot of guys with length so they can close those passing lanes off quick and they just simply deny any sort of drives. You saw that as we have a stoppage. Duncan Lysander, a little bit of a cut on his knee as he's bleeding through his leggings. The officials say it's all right though. You saw Clay Mouse over on the bench. The headband has come off, so you'd assume his night is probably done as Lysander is gonna come back over to the bench and they'll wrap that knee real fast. Quick work there by the trainer, shout out to him. Impressive work coming right over, got the athletic tape, 
wraps it up, and Barclay Radabaugh is right back to clapping and getting these guys fired up a little bit. Still has a couple of timeouts, too, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few more breaks out of him. Pull up from Kenny, nothing but net. Colin Kenny, the Michigan City, Indiana native. It's that bucket, 86-45. Shoot. Shooters do indeed shoot, and they have shot it, and they've hit it 53% of the time. There's a nice drive from Travis Anderson. Give him 14 points on the night. The only Buccaneer in double figures. He's 6 of 11 from the field, 2 of 4 from the 3. Four assists and a turnover, an efficient game from Travis Anderson. Ben Beaker came flying in there, got the offensive board and put it back. Second chance points tonight. They've certainly gone the way of the Paladins. 13 to two in that category. You see one of the names out there, Robert Swanson, Myrtle Beach native. Battle drives in, goes up right hand, can't get it to fall as it bounced on the back iron. So close, so close. It'll be a timeout. Call, getting some names in there. Rhett Lister, easily native, checking in, the freshman. As Rhett Lister a walk on. His dad, Chad, actually, the head basketball coach at North Greenville. Kenny tries to drive on Bowser. Pew, deep three, rattles it in. The southpaw putting it up and in. 91 points now on the night for Furman. We'll see if they can break the century mark with a walk-on in the game. Couple walk-ons. Battle holding it up top. Gets a screen from Lysander. Down low, turnaround jumper. No good front iron. Beaker comes away with the board. As this clock continues to wind down, it's going to go down. One and two, CSU is going to fall. Furman will improve to three and oh. Kenny just out to Lister. Over to Swanson, a little bit of a floater. Can't get the touch off the glass. Here comes Battle pushing the tempo. Missed it off, and that's deflected out. CSU will keep possession, and Timmy Sellers and Matt Cornwell will check into the game. Just the ball movement for Furman is so impressive. And these are guys who don't get in the game a lot, if at often at all. Is that deflection as Cormlow inbounds it. Xander holding up top, trying to find somewhere to go with the ball. Gets it to Cormlow. Battle holding up top. We've got less than 60 seconds to play. Sellers, handoff to Cormlow. Looks to drive, going up with the right hand, no good. Sellers battling for the board, Cormlow gets it. He's gonna go up again, can't get that one to fall. He was a little too far underneath the basket. Cormlow has a huge smile on his face. He wants that bucket just about as bad as his teammates want him to have it. The walk-on freshman from Greenville, South Carolina. Driving up, Swanson can't get that to fall. Lysandra with the rebound. Shot clock is off. Anderson dribbles it up the floor. He's going to drive, kick to Cormlow. Five seconds. Battle, crossover. Dish for three. No good, and there is the horn. Final score, the Paladins. 91, Charleston Southern. 47. What a victory by the Furman Paladin. The big statement win on the road here at Charleston Southern. Big time win as we've got the Sun Belt Rentals star player. And it is Corey Mounts. 19 points, 6 rebounds, 7 of 11 shooting, 4 of 7 from beyond the arm. This play mount was in. Incredible in all facets of the game, whether it was outside, inside, running back door, getting three.